guys, Will here with WTF Car Reviews and Terry gonna be reviewing this all new 2022 Dodge Challenger Scatback 392. And a huge thanks to PJ and the rest of the management and staff here at Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram of Tampa Bay for making this review possible. I'll leave a link to our inventory below and if you're in the Tampa area looking for a new car, SUV, or truck, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out. And for those of you guys who don't know, the Challenger has been a two-door muscle car offered by Dodge since 1970. That's when the first generation was released. That first generation lasted up until 1974 before taking a four-year break for the second generation, which was released in 1978, lasting up until 1983. After that, there was a 25-year hiatus for the Dodge Challenger before being returned for the third generation in 2008. We're still sitting on that third generation platform. It was refreshed back in 2015. Before the refresh, the Challenger was available in three different engine options, starting with a 3.5 liter V6, making a pretty lackluster 250 horsepower, 250 pound-feet of torque. Really not an impressive motor at all. You could have upgraded to the 5.7 liter V8, Dodge's famous Hemi V8, cranking out 372 horsepower with the automatic transmission and 398 pound-feet of torque. You go with the manual, you would have gotten bumped up to 375 horsepower and 404 pound-feet of torque. Much healthier numbers, the SRT8 at the time featured a 6.1 liter V8, making 425 horsepower and 420 pound-feet of torque. In about 2011, Dodge updated the motors a little bit, including a 3.6 liter Pentastar V6, which makes a much healthier 305 horsepower, 268 pound-feet of torque, and a new SRT392, which made 470 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque. After the 2015 facelift, we introduced a couple new trim levels such as the SRT Scatback, well not the SRT, this is the RT Scatback, which features the same 6.4 liter V8 out of the old SRT 392, but now for a more affordable package. Also, the 6.4 post 2015 facelift makes a little bit more power, now making 485 horsepower, 475 pound-feet of torque, and also post 2015 facelift, we got the world famous 6.2 liter supercharged V8, that's featured in the Hellcat and Demon and all bunch of other supercharged Mopar vehicles. So that motor makes between 770 horsepower and 840 horsepower, depending on whether you go with the regular Hellcat or the Demon. Also making 656 pound-feet of torque all the way up to 717. The post-2015 refresh also retired the SRT8 trim, replaced it with the SRT392 and the SRT Hellcat. We also get a new grille, new lights, a 7-inch standard touchscreen, and an 8.4-inch optional touchscreen, and we get larger brakes for the performance models too. This 2022 RT Scatback starts at $45,055 for the manual, $46,650 for the automatic. What do we get for that money? Let's jump right in. So up front, you notice your post-refresh updated front grille, updated light pattern too, as well as this upgraded more aggressive RT hood. This Go Mango orange paint color is extremely aggressive. It's 395 bucks. We get the RT Scat Pack ATX package, which includes HID headlamps, blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alert, as well as folding mirrors. They're not power folding mirrors, but they still fold, which is nice. We get the eight speed torque flight transmission for an additional 1595 bucks offering us a leather wrap shift knob, remote start, and paddle shifters. We get the optional 8.4 inch display here too, which gives us a nicer display compared to the seven inch, which also includes GPS navigation and five year series, which sold us out a little bit closer to 50,000 bucks, but still a lot of value in this high performance RT trim. You get almost 500 horsepower, almost 500 pound feet of torque, and a very bold front end. You notice your fog lights too. Those yellow markers on the front splitter, they're removable, they're just, um, transportation guards but i know a lot of owners that actually keep these on through the duration of their ownership with the challenger so i'm not going to take them off let the owner do whatever they would like with them if you didn't notice rt badge because the scat back is not an srt vehicle it's a performance bargain kind of like my car the camaro lt1 but this is a more spacious more luxurious vehicle you'll see once we step inside this wheel and tire setup it's aggressive we get these 20 inch rims wrapped in goodyear eagle rs all season tires so not the best wheel and tire setup for a vehicle with almost 500 horsepower there is a lot of wheel spin but these are still pretty good for all weather conditions they're perfect tires for the rain so if you daily drive your 392 scat pack i wouldn't recommend necessarily needing to change these tires if you're a performance kind of guy like me yes i would definitely recommend throwing some sticky 305s back there you get an aggressive four piston brembo brake caliper up front 392 scat pack badge right here on the side with a little bumblebee pretty cool 
folding mirrors, as we mentioned, smart access for the driver and a front passenger, and this orange go orange paint is very, very aggressive. That old school Challenger fuel cap signature for the Challenger, very cool retro look. We don't get the easy fill, but you can just unscrew and fill your 392 up. Premium fuel's recommended. I believe the 6.4 out of the Ram trucks actually can take regular fuel, but for the scat pack, the high performance trim, it cannot. Our rear, same wheel and tire setup as we have up front. Only difference is a smaller brake caliper, but unlike my Camaro LT1, we get a dual piston Brembo out rear, even for the scat pack. This is not a 392 SRT, and it's not a scat pack with a performance package, and we still get the dual pistons out rear. We get the lip spoiler out back with the scat pack badge in the right corner, backup camera on the lip spoiler too, LED for the taillights, Dodge badge in the center, shout out Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram of Tampa Bay for making this review possible. Active dual exhaust, rear parking sensing, but speaking of the dual exhaust, let's fire up this 6.4 liter V8 and hear how she sounds. All right, guys, that was the sound of the 6.4 liter Hemi V8 sold by Dodge for the 2022 Scatback 392, and it sounds really good. So weighing in at 4,272 pounds, cranking out 485 horsepower, 475 pound-feet of torque, made it to this eight-speed torque flight, automatic transmission. You can expect zero to 60 around 4.2 seconds, quarter mile at 12 and a half. So really quick vehicle, even for a vehicle weighing in at 4,200 pounds, I kind of wish they shrank it up a little bit, get us under a 4,000 pound curb weight and the performance would be fantastic, especially when it comes to handling. As you see, no strut tower braces, no braces connecting to the radiator, nothing in front of your radiator either when it comes to supports. So the handling is not gonna be quite as good as a Mustang or especially a Camaro. We do get functional airflow though, so that's nice for this massive 6.4 liter V8, but we can shut this thing up take one more step back get a good look at those front daytime running lights on those hid headlamps very clean appearance fog lights too hopefully you can pick them up as far as the interior we can take a step over here and check it out so remember we do have some options on this scatback 392 but it's still a relatively basic trim up top we get soft touch materials which is nice we don't get soft touch for the camaro until you go for the 2ss down below we get some leather stitch trim auto one touch for the front two windows four-way adjustable mirrors aluminum door handle and a little bit of storage you can fit a 20 ounce water bottle alpine sound system too pretty good sounding sound system the seats are cloth we get a scatback little emblem on them. They are almost fully adjustable. We can slide, drop, and lift with two-way lumbar control, but the recline function is manual, which is unfortunate because the base Camaro, the Camaro LT1, has power recline. But as far as this interior in general, we can take a step inside and really check it out. So the first thing we notice is the steering wheel. It's a large steering wheel. We get some perforated leather for the nine and three, which is nice. Pretty thick, solid 10 and two bolstering notch. It's not a flat bottom like, like it is in the Camaro but it's a nice steering wheel. I do prefer this over what we would get in the Mustang. The Dodge area is rubberized, the horn, pretty aggressive sounding horn. People should definitely be getting out of your way. Aluminum paddle shifters, they're not very large though, so check those out. They don't take up that entire column. On the steering wheel, we get controls, so this is just your infotainment system, voice recognition, answer and hang up your phone calls. On the right side, we get our cruise control too, that's nice. The stocks have a pretty satisfying click to them, nothing too impressive. The only stock we have is on the left side. No rain sensing wipers wouldn't really be expected. The headlight stocks are to the left. We have auto headlamps with our fog lights, interior lighting, and our trunk release. We have some aluminum outlining our gauges and air conditioning controls. The gauges are pretty old school. The tack goes to about, let's say 5,800 RPM, maybe 6,000. The speedometer goes to 180, and we get a digital display in the center. Digital speedometer, and of course, it's adjustable with these buttons. So we can check out the vehicle info, oil pressure, oil life, battery voltage, intake air temperature, it's cool to look at at all times, engine torque, engine power, tire pressure, coolant temp, trans temp, 
and our oil temp right back to where we started. So we could also see performance, traction, um, quarter mile time, reaction time best. We're not gonna be testing anything like that out in a dealership car, braking distance, G-force, peak G-forces, lap timer, lap history, top speed, zero to 60 MPH timer. We're not gonna check that out either, but for the potential owner, it would be pretty cool to know after buying this car. Reaction time, a lot of performance, pages fuel economy actually not that bad for a dealership car considering it's been doing nothing but idling and going on test drives 14.3 isn't actually that terrible we get trip info trip a and trip b audio see what songs playing we get messages screen setup diagnostics speed warning and our digital speedometer so my personal favorites look at all times will probably be this power gauge so right here engine power I would like to see that at all times. The dashboard is all soft touch materials. We get the upgraded 8.4 inch display. We get the SRT dashboard, track sport, custom and auto mode. We get launch control, which we're not gonna be testing out in this car. Honestly, this thing spins in first and second gear pretty aggressively. So launch control is just about useless unless you get some sticky tires. Line lock, that's pretty cool if you wanna do some smoky burnouts. Drive modes, that's where we're looking at right now, but tra transmissions and track, paddle shifters are on, tractions and track, and steering's in track. We'll check out track, of course. That's like what this vehicle is all about, the top performance mode. The performance pages, you can click on these as soon as it loads up. So quite some time to load up, but we have our power gauge, current gear, G-force, and click to add more widgets, timers, nice, gauges. You can see at all times, G-force, engine, cool and dyno this is sick so you can see exactly how much power your srt is making well not your srt your 392 i'm sorry guys but you can see exactly how much power it's making at all times i think i'm going to leave it here for the purpose of this review that's pretty cool to look at we get the media climate controls nav phone and settings as far as nav we can take a look at our screen map pretty old school it's not the best resolution but the response is good it responds very well to your touch apple carplay and android auto if you don't want to be looking through your chrysler map we also get race options so when you click on race options you get line lock and launch control too. line lock ready and you can activate it here as well but as, as we mentioned my personal favorites to look at at all times as soon as it loads up would be this dyno page i think it is really cool that's available soft touch beneath that engine start stop mute hazards you can turn your screen off drive mode select as we mentioned we get track sport custom and auto mode launch control you can turn off your parking sensors turn off your traction control tune your defroster information automatic climate control and your vent controls if you want to use if you don't want to use the auto climate surrounding your gear selector is this nice aluminum trim with some leather stitching for your passenger's knee will hit and where your knee will hit high quality interior the gear selector controls your torque flight eight speed automatic transmission the backup camera doesn't quite have the best resolution we still get guidance lines and trajectory though so that's all you can really ask for if you don't want to use your tiny little paddle shifters you can use the manual shift controls in the proper directions to upshift and downshift we can throw this thing right back into park cool two cup holders and they are probably big enough to fit 12 maybe 16 ounce water bottles more than big enough we got this very soft padded armrest a million times softer than what you would get from the camaro as far as the little center console area the space is impressive it's pretty deep i would expect you to fit five or six 16 ounce water bottles two usb ports and an aux port an additional um 12 volt two as soon as we can open it up good spot for a radar detector outside of that the glove box we can open it up it's outlined in soft touch materials lined with felt that was not expected in a sub $45,000 base price vehicle. Massive storage. You're fitting 30, 40 license plates, easily fit two pairs of shoes. You can shut this thing right up. Auto dimming rear view mirror. It's not frameless, but it's still auto dimming. Three garage home link settings on it. Sunglass holder, nice. The visors have a lit mirror. Not quite sure why that needed to be shown, but it does have it available after all. So 392 also on the passenger air vent. That's a cool little touch. If I happen to miss any features, we can take a quick look at this window sticker before checking out the back seat. So as you mentioned, base price $44,155. The exterior color is the Go Mango exterior paint, black cloth interior, 392 V8 SRT Hemi MDS engine made it to the Torque Flight 8-speed automatic transmission. You can pause, take a look at all the standard features. It is loaded loaded with standard features this active exhaust it sounds really good but you don't get any burbles like you get out of the camaros but as you mentioned it still sounds very good listen yeah sounds mean but again you pause take a look at all the standard features options include the rt scat pack atx 24g for about 1400 bucks torque flight transmission for 1600 thousand bucks for the uconnect 
8.4 inch touchscreen, 1600 for the destination, totals us out a tick over 50 thousand bucks fuel economy 18 mpgs 15 city 24 highway definitely not the best but for a vehicle with almost 500 horsepower with a 6.4 liter v8 not that bad we can check out the back seat real quick before taking this thing out for a drive pull this latch it's gonna be tough i could already tell you guys that oh my god i'm a little bit over six feet tall sitting behind my seat settings and i don't think my left foot's gonna really appreciate this but we'll set it up Nevertheless, so wow, just as um, cramped as my 2021 Camaro LT1. I got no space for my legs, no space for my feet. We do get air vents back here, which is a huge thumbs up considering that I don't think anybody will fit back here. Two map pockets too, and uh, three seat belts. That's funny because again, like I said, it's pretty tough to fit back here. We get a little armrest, pretty soft, two cup holders, 12 ounces should fit in here, no problem. Interior lights, they're not controllable though, unfortunately, you can't actually activate them from the back seat. These back here also, they light up whenever the doors open or the passenger or when the driver up front or the passenger up front activate the interior lights. So as far as space, I really don't have a whole lot. I can't complain when it comes to headroom. I have at least an inch or two when it comes to headroom, but I would need at least another three inches for comfortable leg space. The materials back here are hard plastic. We do get a soft touch armrest though. That's appreciated. The Camaro does not get that, but I couldn't stand sit back here any longer. Let's hop out of here. Take a quick look at the trunk and then take this car out for a drive. So anybody under like five foot five, five foot four shouldn't have that much trouble back here. Small children shouldn't have any issues, but full size adults would not want to be back here. If you need to fit full size adults in the back seat of your car, go with the Charger. The Challenger has a more spacious back seat compared to the Mustang and the Camaro, but really not by much. We're talking about like an inch, maybe two inches. If you're over five foot five, you're not going to want to spend any time back here. The trunk, way way larger than the mustang and the camaro still significantly smaller of an opening compared to the charger so if you need to fit larger items back here the charger's opening cuts out around the light so you can fit larger stuff but compared to the sports cars in the segment this is by far best in class the depth i can't reach the back seats so very deep cargo space the wheel well cutouts allow you to fit a golf bag horizontally suitcase with no issues big thumbs up little secret storage you can check it out we can okay cool we get our little fix it flat battery kit nice and some secret storage in the center you can shut this thing right up take one more step back get a look at the outside of this 2022 scatback 392 it's a nice car for a sub fifty thousand dollar sports car you get a lot a lot for the money i'm interested to see how it drives with this eight-speed automatic transmission because i've driven a scatback already on this channel it was just a six-speed manual so this will compare better with my 2021 Camaro LT1 and really allow me to see how the Scat Pack really performs compared to the Camaro. But anyway, let's take it out for a drive. All right, guys, now we're just about seeing everything we need to see with the inside and outside of this all new 2022 Dodge Challenger Scat Pack 392. Let's take it out for a drive. First thing I noticed in track mode, the steering feels heavy. It feels noticeably heavier than the Camaro and Mustang. We'll see how it changes up in the normal modes, but the throttle feels sensitive in track. Oh yeah. Oh, feels torquey. Feels like those wheels are ready to break loose, even when you're barely on the gas pedal. Almost 500 pound feet of torque and all season tires, 245 width. That'll do that to you, but still feels really muscular. All right, guys, taking a step out here onto this multiple lane highway. We can lean into it a little bit, half throttle. Quick shifts too, that thing was surprisingly quick. Automatic mode, I didn't do anything there. Really good torque. The initial tap of the gas pedal feels stronger than my 6.2 Camaro LT1, but it doesn't it doesn't feel torque here. It's just the gas pedal is tuned a little bit more sensitively in track mode. Well, one more time on the gas. Oh, wow, yeah. Quick transmission, track mode. This transmission shifts very quickly. And just cruising along we're holding gears of course it's uh, track mode we could drop it down into seventh and it's quiet you hear a tiny bit of drone in uh, track mode you don't hear any drone in the Camaro LT1 thanks to its cylinder deactivation and the center baffle that closes up when you're just cruising along it doesn't really have that here but I almost prefer it that way because I like hearing that V8 rumble when you're leaning into the gas pedal you hear those downshifts not the most aggressive like 
Right now we're in third, second gear. Mm, you hear a little bit, but it's not as aggressive as the Camaro. It's not as aggressive sounding as the Mustang, but it has that old schoolness to it, if you know what I mean. We can take a step right here, second gear on the gas. Oh, yeah, this thing can move. It does feel like it can get a little bit squirrely down low, but I'm sure you get used to it. All right, guys, looks like we can merge onto this real highway right here. Second gear on the gas. Gosh, this thing is a monster. <laughs> it pulls hard. And it put the power down in second gear. Third gear. Yeah. It, pick, it picks up speed very well. It's not quicker than the Mustang GT or Camaro LT1. But it's quick, it's definitely up there in speed. It gives you more space. So if you're a bigger dude, you're like 6'5 plus, 250 plus, you're not gonna wanna just like fall down into the Mustang, into the Camaro for daily driving. This is a perfect balance for you. Downshift. Yeah, this thing can move really well. And for this off-ramp, we can throw it in. The steering feels sharp and um, track mode but it feels very sharp on center it doesn't feel more on center than the camaro but it feels comparable to the mustang which is good the mustang is a good sports car this is a decent sports car too it's just heavier everybody knows that the challenger is a heavy vehicle so if you're looking for the most nimble vehicle obviously go with the camaro if you're looking for a balance between the nimbleness and the space i guess go with the mustang but the mustang really isn't that much more spacious than the camaro this also really isn't that much more spacious than the Camaro. So I'm, I've been saying it for a while now, if you if you are serious about space, you want the performance, but you genuinely need space, go with the Charger because the Charger is genuinely spacious for the back seat, genuinely spacious for the cargo space. But this weighs about 150 pounds less than a Charger. So the performance is a little bit better, not much, like basically the same when it comes to performance, but it looks a lot meaner in my opinion. We can all agree that the Challenger has a meaner appearance. But all right, guys, first gear. Ooh. Yeah, this thing is such a monster. There we go. That was an aggressive sounding rev match. Nice. All right, guys, throwing it into automatic mode, no longer in track, just auto mode. Try it out. First gear, second gear, on the gas. Oh yeah, it still feels just as strong but the throttle didn't feel nearly as sensitive. One more second gear pull. Yeah, it's a strong feeling motor. Really, really strong feeling motor. Uh, but we can calm down a little bit. What a hell of a beast. And in automatic mode, the steering feels lighter. Not like drastically lighter. We need to get into the center lane, oops. But yeah, not drastically lighter, but it feels a little bit lighter. The throttle feels less sensitive, but it still feels super torquey as soon as you lean into the gas pedal that throttle response like right here like that initial surge it feels a little bit stronger than the camaro so i think they tuned the gas pedal a little bit more aggressively but the overall low end torque i feel like the camaro just feels stronger i mean it weighs like 650 pounds less so you would expect to feel torque here because it still has 455 pound feet of torque but overall if you're looking for a more spacious badass looking muscle car I would definitely recommend the Challenger Scat Pack. This motor sounds fantastic. It looks mean. Obviously, it's starting to get a little bit older than some of the competition in terms of updates and facelifts, but really not by much because at the end of the day, the materials here are still nicer than a Camaro, still nicer than a Mustang, and the overall like boldness and appearance doesn't seem very dated at all that's kind of what they were going for with the challenger to give it that classic old school look so it works the fact that it hasn't been updated since 2008 isn't the biggest deal but if they do release a next generation challenger i do want them to get rid of at least 250 pounds make it a little bit lighter and more playful of a vehicle and i think you can steal some of the camaro customers away because there are rumors that gm is going away 
with the Camaro. But again, if you're looking for a badass looking muscle car, I would 100% recommend the Challenger. If you're looking for the best bang for your buck in terms of performance with the Challenger, you gotta go with the Scapa. And a big thanks to PJ and the rest of the management and staff here at Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram of Tampa Bay for making this review possible. I'll leave a link to your inventory below. And if you're looking for a new car, SUV, or truck in the Tampa area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out. And huge thanks to all you guys for watching. I had a great time making this video. This is a sweet, sweet car. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much. You guys know the channel is just not possible without you guys. And I really appreciate the constant support. But again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Leave a like too. It really helps me out the YouTube algorithm. That's how these videos get promoted to new people. Leave a comment. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you don't like. Leave a comment. Let me know if there's any specific cars, trucks, SUVs you like to see reviewed in this channel too. And I'll definitely try to get those videos for you as soon as possible. But other than that, again, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope all of you have a great day.